Hey everybody, welcome back. How are you not a model? TikToks. Kind of hurt my throat. <laughs> All this yelling is gonna catch up to me, I swear. I'm saving my voice, so now I'm only gonna talk like this in videos. <laughs> It has come to my attention that I've never shared the most embarrassing day of my life. This happened about five years ago and I think about it often because it truly humbled me. So let me take you back. I'm like 19, 20, I'm going on a work trip and I'm getting flown to New York with my best friend. And we are getting wined and dined by this client. I'm feeling like I'm in Gossip Girl. I'm going to all the hot spots. I'm feeling myself. Little did I know that the universe was like, Jacqueline, we got to humble you. We can't let your head get too big. So at the end of this trip, my friend and I decided to extend the stay and enjoy New York off the clock for a little bit. And we thought we were gonna be really cool and go to Dumbo Soho House, spend the day there, suntan. This cool spot, spot has like cool some spot. of the best views of the city. To really paint mm -hmm. the picture, this is what the house looks like. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's already like a no phones environment. Everyone there seems like they're someone. I'm already out of my element. So me and my friend, we get to the pool bright and early. We want a secure day bed. Oh, so like the little dorks we are, we roll up right at 9 a.m. We sit ourselves down on one of those little day beds and we're like, we're gonna stay here all day. Look at us, how cool is life? It was midsummer, so it was super busy. It was popping all day. The pool is packed, we're making friends, vibes are good. At this point, it's maybe like 12, 31 o'clock. We've just been suntanning all day. And I kind of noticed the pool starts to clear out and I'm thinking it's lunchtime, everyone's gonna grab a little bite. You know what? Perfect time for me to finally get in the pool and cool off. As I walk on over, I realize there's no one in the pool and I'm thinking, score, I got the pool to myself. Are you kidding me? Oh, I jump on in, I dive in, hair under, I'm fully in the water. And I'm like, what better time to do some laps? I'm gonna get some exercise. So I'm doing the breaststroke, I'm butterflying, I'm swimming back and forth. I at least did like three laps lengthwise of the pool. By like the second lap, I'm noticing everyone's kind of watching me and I'm thinking, oh my God, do I look that good? Should I be an Olympic swimmer? I'm feeling myself. And every time I pop out of the water, I'm realizing like everyone's staring at me. Again, rose colored glasses. I think, I think things are well. I'm at the opposite side of the pool now. I look back and I see my friend still on the day bed. And All right, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> Soho House in New York, they have shifts for the day beds. So like every three hours or so, everybody leaves because you book a day bed for like three hour shifts. So you can't stay there all day. And then they just basically tell you to get off. Like I'm telling you right now, this is what happened. Oh God. Oh no. She's kind of like waving. She's like, Jacqueline, Jacqueline, hey, come on. I'm like, friend, leave me be. I'm having a moment. People are watching me. So I keep swimming and it's not until I see a staff member come over and kind of crouch down at the side of the pool. And he's like, ma'am, ma'am, can you come over here? Ma'am, you need to get out. I'm oh, like, wait, 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 wait. He's okay. like, ma'am, a child has shit no! in the pool. He cleared out the pool. A, a kid has shit in the pool. At this point, everyone is staring at me. I've been fully submerged. My hair is dripping in the shit water. He's like, ma'am, let me help you out of the pool. So I jump out of the pool. I kind of shake off the water. Hose he goes, ma'am, follow me. I'm, I'm going to hose you off. I'm going to rinse you off right now. This man pulls out like an industrial hose oh. in the main pool area no. where everyone's walking it's still. So and he hoses me off in front of everyone. Oh. When I tell you, easy 200 oh people. Like, like the pool was packed. Everyone is watching this happen. My friend is still on the day bed, dying laughing at this whole thing. I'm standing there getting hosed off. And the sweet staff, he was so apologetic. He's like, I thought I told everyone at the pool to get out. I don't know how you didn't hear. I don't know how we missed you. So I dropped my head and I sauntered back over to the day bed. Not one person said a word to me as I walked back. All of the staff was, I think, so embarrassed for me and felt so bad that they ended up giving me and my friend free drinks and food for the rest of the day, which we took advantage of and we stayed till close. It was honestly a really um, grounding experience and something that I think needed to happen in that exact moment of my life. Because whenever you think you're hot, <laughs> you in that. fact are swimming in it. Period. Whoa, that is not what I thought you were going to say. I thought you were going to say, yeah, we're going to like hustle everybody out. It doesn't matter who you are. Let me paint the picture for you here. Soho House, especially in New York, places like New York, LA, in general, honestly, it's full of a lot of people who are really like too cool for school. Okay. When you say everybody, somebody, it's like, yeah, yes and no. Like, mwah, yes and no. People go to Soho House to be seen. I've met friends at Soho House. There's some cool people at Soho House. But more often than not, there's a lot of pretentious people at Soho House. 
very pretentious. So imagine a bar, a rooftop bar in New York full of all these really pretentious people. People you want to be like cool around, right? It's like, um, you think you're cool, I'm cool. You're covered in uh -huh. around them. And then they got to watch you get hosed off. Yeah, that's embarrassing. It's even worse. <laughs> that's a good motto for life though. If you think you are the shit, cause whenever you think you're hot shit, you are in fact swimming in shit. <laughs> How dare everyone else watch you swim in that water? I would have went over and kindly told you. I am a little confused as to how you could have possibly been swimming in that shit water for as long as you were. <laughs> Like, how did they not tell you? Kate, but the real question is, babes, did you get pink eye? <laughs> Kate, noted, noted. You know, I was kind of upset about the fact that I couldn't get a day bed at Dumbo Soho House, but now I'm like, ooh, maybe I don't want to be in that pool. It was once covered in baby doo-doo. Baby duke. Can I get a baby duke with my picante? I thought that the hospital was a safe place, free of judgment. But apparently, no, it's not if no. you're a medical phenomenon. So as a lot of you might already know, when you lose your hair from chemotherapy, when it grows back, quite often, like nine times out of ten, it comes back different. It'll come back a different colour, it'll come back a different texture. That's where the term chemo curls comes from, because most people's hair goes curly. But lo and behold, every time I've lost my hair, it's come back exactly the same. That was until one day I'm shaving my JJ, right? Everything's grown back normal, it is as it was. I shave it again, and it grows back. Except this time... I walk past the mirror and and there's a little twinge. I, I'm thinking, what's going on? I'm thinking, is it is it the lighting in here? Is there a shadow? Or is it that there's a f***ing satsuma between my legs? Because my f***s are now ginger. I call my girlfriend in for confirmation. I'm like, have a look at that, darling. She says nothing. She just goes... So now I'm panicking, I'm getting myself into all kinds of positions to see if it's true. I'm thinking, I don't know what kind of crazy maze we're in right now. This mirror is distorted. And then as I'm sat there contemplating life, I remember... And my dad has little ginger sideburns. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, you <laughs> slimy That little bit of DNA has resurfaced in me. The recessive genes are saying, oh, God, it's our time to shine. So the next time I go to the doctor, naturally I say to him, mm, I've got a little bit of a sensitive subject. I said, have you ever heard of someone growing ginger after chemotherapy? And this man, who had been a doctor for 20 years, looks me dead in the eye and goes, I have never heard of that <laughs> in my entire life. <laughs> have you heard this thing called lying? Lie to me! I don't want to be the only girl in the village with an orangutan chemotherapy bush. <laughs> How are you going to embarrass me like that? Anyway, I keep shaving it off and then it just starts growing back black again. Like Weird. nothing ever happened. It was just a one-time thing. I was thinking, damn, I used to love to show Orange is the New Black. I could get used to this. Ah! Orange is definitely not the new black. <laughs> okay, wait, why are we talking about that medical affliction as if it's a bad thing? Is it a bad thing? I would imagine if it's different here and there, it would look a little weird. Are we embarrassed of our of our ginger kitten? <laughs> a ginger kitten is nothing to be embarrassed of. All right. I feel like he hasn't heard of it because most people don't mention it. Why not? Y'all embarrassed? Y'all embarrassed? It's not embarrassing! It makes you special! You can always dye it. <laughs> what is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you in your life? I'll go first. So every year, my dad and his friendship group from school, they're still all very good friends. Um, it's a group of my dad's best friends. They all go out for end of year drinks with their group and their children. The wives are not invited. That might sound weird to you, but if you knew my dad's friends, you would understand. Anyway, this was two weeks ago. Um, and ever since it's been my Roman empire, I have thought about it every single day. And it is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to me ever in my life. And I do not get embarrassed easily. Anyway, so I decided to wear a um, long maxi dress from Dish. It's black, it's linen, and it's strapless. And it's honestly one of my favorite dresses. I've worn it a couple of times now. So um, I turned up about half an hour late. I'd had a really big day. And so by the time I got there, majority of my dad's friends were there and a few of the kids were already there. So I'm walking over to the group and they can kind of see me approaching. So they're kind of looking over in my direction and I'm looking in their direction. I'm looking straight in my dad's eyes. And as I'm walking, I step on the front of my dress and my dress falls down. Whilst I'm making eye contact with my dad, and I'm not just talking like a little slip oh top of my came out no no i'm talking full on 
full on. <laughs> Both my out and about, eyes making contact with my dad, making contact with my dad. Oh, I don't think I'm ever going to recover. My wedding is in a few months time and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to make a better entrance on my wedding day than I did that day. Because let me tell you, some of the dads were talking about how much they enjoyed my entrance oh, God. that day. No. And if that's not scarring enough, no. I don't know what is. Oh. So yeah, that's my story. They have to say that. Oh, uh, I very much enjoy my youth grown up. Oh. See, oh, my beauty light turned off. Oh no, am I ugly now? Do you guys think I'm ugly without my beauty light? Ah! There you go. There you go. A little brighter, how about? A little brighter, she's, she, she, oh, there you go, there you go. <laughs> what, where was I, where was I? I feel like this only happens when you have like strapless, strapless things. Honestly, this experience alone has made me want to wear like those like little covers, you know, like little nip covers, right? I feel like that would be a good move, especially. Sorry, I spat, I spat everywhere. I spat, I spat everywhere thinking about nipple covers, salivating, thinking about nipple covers, how I want to eat them. This entire thing could have been avoided if number one, the dress had straps and number two if we had some little covers little covers but like also like why do dads have to like make it that much more embarrassing like oh god can we just like pretend that never happened like why do we need to make a dad comment about it oh my you seem to have grown up oh dear you gave us a show dinner and a show me, 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 me. shut up I'm trying to think of like a way that you could like show up next time and just like make a joke about it like maybe have some just like like a t-shirt that says i don't know you nothing to see here or something okay so here's how you make a better entrance number one just get some straps for your <laughs> i hope your wedding dress is not strapless let's add some straps onto that if you don't want any straps maybe some like see-through mesh or something holding it up i think well not even believe this i'm gonna try to make this short but this was the worst experience of my whole entire life. First of all, glasses off. He calls me. <laughs> I get to the restaurant before him. He calls me. We're in downtown Fort Worth. He's freaking out. He's like calling me pissed. The freaking. Except he's cussing. Pedestrians and traffic and I hate downtown. Da, da, da. And I was like, first of all, you need to calm down. Second of all, you chose this place. So relax. I said, I just got here. It's not that serious. We got all night, like, freaking relax. He finally gets to me. When I'm waiting outside the restaurant, he walks up to me. He greets me by going, rah! I was like, ew, and also cringe. And then he hugs me as if I was the love of his life that he hasn't seen in three months. And I was like, mm, okay, okay, like, whew. off to a terrible start. Dinner was the most awkward of my life. I went to the bathroom twice just to escape. Made friends with some girls in the bathroom told them how it was the worst day ever, how I was dying to leave. He tried to hold my hand twice. I pulled away and said, no, twice. He's like, the second time he's like, you're not gonna hold my hand. I was like, no, please don't touch me. He paid. I feel like at that point, babe, I don't think you should have been there at all. I feel like you should have left. If you don't want to hold his hand, if we got to be telling people to not touch us, like we shouldn't, we shouldn't be on that date still. I'm just saying. For dinner, it was $127. <laughs> Okay, I offered to pay my side. He declined. Good. Okay. We left. We're walking. He's yelling. He's playing fake mad, which he says was like a joke. He wanted to go to Cigar Lounge. I was like, absolutely not. I said, I really want to go home. It's like, let's go. He kept trying to hold my hand. I kept telling him no. He said, no, it's not an option. And he grabbed my hand like aggressively. And I was like, but I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of scared of him at this point. Even though, by the way, he was as tall as me. He lied about his height. So I was like, okay, I'm As kind they of do. Of him at this point because he's getting like angry. So I was like, I'm just gonna just roll with it. So I held his hand and it was the I wanted to throw up. We get to the parking garage and he's like, I don't even know if I'm in this garage. I'm like, okay. I said, can I see your phone? He gives me his phone. I'm looking. I'm like, yes, you're in this garage. See right here. And I show him and he's just like, I was like, are you drunk right now? Like, are you drunk? Or are you high? Like, what's going on? He's like, 
I may have had a lot of alcohol before he came in, so I was nervous. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, you're drunk right now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was nervous. I was like, let's go. Wait, so he drove to you drunk and now wants to drive you home drunk? How are you not embarrassed? Be freaking for real, like actually. So I literally started pulling him by like his shirt. I'm pulling him. We go in the elevator. We can't find his car. This guy has no mother freaking clue where he parked. I ask him for his keys so I can hit the horn to find his car. We start at the top and we work our way down, okay? I'm... <sighs> I'm so nice. I wanted to leave his bootay tay just sitting in the, I didn't, no. But I'm nice, so I try to help us, help him find his car. We can't find his car, we're honking the horn. He starts to get very angry. He's throwing his food, yelling, hooting, hollering, screaming, kicking the pillar like there's some, we're in a parking garage. I'm like, I'm like, okay, so I start recording. I'm like, it's gonna be okay, you've gotta calm down, we're gonna find your car, like it's gonna be fun. I'm being so nice. Security rolls around and I flag him down and I was like, help me. I didn't even care at this point. I was like, I'm being rescued. <laughs> well, they jump out of the Jeep and they're like, oh my God, oh my God. And they call for backup and all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, no, no, no it's fine. Everything's fine. It's like, he's drunk. He's angry. We can't find his car. This is a first date and I would really like to just leave. Like, can yeah. you guys take over? Yeah. Group, there's like six of us now, all these like security guards and me and this drunk guy so he's yelling across the parking lot you're done with me aren't you yeah you're yeah it's safe to say yeah and i was like <laughs> the two security guards were just laughing with me like oh brother but this is why we take our own car this is why we keep our phone fully charged and full of storage so we can record things. yes yes i already blocked his number in front of the security guards and oh block Thanks for listening. You're welcome. You're welcome. That was a hell of a tale. A whale of a tale. You know, you're a lot nicer than I was. Like the fact that you were trying to help him find his car says a lot about you. I mean, he was drunk. So imagine if he like, you know, drove himself home and got in an accident and you found out about it. Like I'd feel very guilty, but I would have just called the police. Honestly, I would have literally just been like, Yo, uh, I, uh, there's some disorderly conduct happening, some public intoxication. I need a babysitter. Can we get a babysitter over here? Pop him in the drunk tank for a bit. I bet you anything he like didn't park his car in that parking lot. Like I don't, <laughs> maybe he didn't even drive. Maybe he was just looking for an excuse to spend more time with you. <laughs> I think that we need to normalize walking out of a date when we see red flags. Like obviously there's things that are like, mm, that, that could be a red flag. I'm not saying those red flags. I'm talking about like real red flags. We gotta learn how to cut the date short. We don't gotta be nice, okay? We get our friends to call with a fake emergency. You should be doing this even if you're not interested in the guy. Do not be giving people your time when you don't see a future. If I find out that you are giving people your time that don't deserve it. There'll be a reckoning. Oh, there she is. The absolute love of my life. I am so lucky I am married to her. <laughs> we need to go. <laughs> what? We need to go. <laughs> just what? destroyed that bathroom. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> Can we go? Can we go? Just when I thought I couldn't be anymore. <laughs> You're filming! Oh my God! <laughs> Just when I thought I couldn't be more in love with you, you just one up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what does she think is gonna happen? You think? <laughs> okay, let's 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 be clear. Whenever we use like a public bathroom and we decimate it, or the person before us decimates it, and there's always like a little look, right? You know, there's always like a little like. You know who decimated that bathroom? What are they gonna do? Are they gonna come after you? Okay, but wait a second. What do you mean by decimate? Did we like vandalize the bathroom with our shit? <laughs> or did you just dookie? Did you just have a dookie? You ever notice that when you like, you know, you walk into a stall and like everything's fine and good and you walk in, you close the door and you make eye contact with the person that was in there before you and then you walk into the bathroom and you're like, whoa. Oh, you took, you, you just took shit. And then if you see that person like in the restaurant or something like that, there's like a, 
I know what you did. I know what your poo smells like. I envy the people who can poo in public, honestly. Like, good for you. I can't. Took me like four days just to shit when I was on vacation. I cannot poo if I am not relaxed and close to my personal toilet. But seriously, what does she think is gonna happen? Like, no one's gonna chase after you and be like, Excuse me, miss. You took a big mm -hmm. I need you to apologize. <laughs> Did you do something different to your hair? Yeah, I just have it half up, half down. Can I feel it? Sure. Time to do a little waxing. <laughs>